So we were just talking about conditional statements, but we actually have a few different kinds of conditional statements. The one we were just looking at is something known as the dual alternative conditional. And it's exactly what it sounds like. I have two different options. I have what will happen if there is a true conditional and what will happen if there is a false conditional. And you can think about this just like uh, two diverging paths. If you've read the Robert Frost, The Road Less Traveled, one of the funny things about that ending is he talks about how uh, both routes actually ended up going to the same point in the end. So it really did not matter which side you took, uh, which is always funny because it's often quoted as saying the, you know, pave, you know, go pave the way. But in the end, you know, it all goes to the other end. So little fun fact if you want to be, you know, uh, fun at parties. <laughs> but one of the other things we can do is we can have what's known as a single alternative conditional. Now a single alternative has no else. Notice how after my if statement I have no else statement afterwards. And what happens is it doesn't matter if it's false. In this case I said x equals 75. Well x 75 is not less than 50 but nothing happens. I just continue going on with my program. And you see this occasionally a lot of times. Uh, say for example, if someone is logged in or is not logged in, you force them into being logged in. But then we also have something a little crazier. And this is known as something called the multi alternative conditional statement. Now, this is basically the exact same thing that we saw with the dual alternative. The two different roads. The only difference in this is now instead of just having one path, I actually have multiple paths. I have in this case one, two, three, four, five separate paths. And you notice that's why I didn't draw out a diagram for this. But like I said, I've got five separate paths that I can take before I move on with my code. One of these things is going to happen and then I will move on with my code. And this is a little interesting because things get evaluated in order. So instead, if we look at this, again, x is equal to 75. Well, x is less than 80, but I don't just immediately go to that one. I have to look at these in order. So the first thing that happens is I go, all right, well, does x is x less than 50. This gets evaluated out as false first. I immediately move down to the next batch. I go else, there was a false statement, else is it less than 60. So this has to be evaluated next. This becomes false. Else is x less than 70. Again, this is false. So it gets evaluated only then now I get else is it less than 80 well guess what it is in fact less than 80 so what would happen if I change this up a little bit let's say for example instead of uh, it's saying 75 what happens if again I tacked a little one in front of there and it became 175 so this becomes a little bit uh, different. Suddenly, uh, this become evaluated. This gets false. This will be false. 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 This, because it's the else statement, this because it's the, you could almost think of it as the, the end all. Uh, everything else evaluated out at, to false, so this is what will occur. And so we would say that uh, x is greater than 50. Now let's continue on this idea. What happens if instead of 175, what happens if, let's see, I changed this expression right here to, I'll just write it out to the side, x is less than 
or greater than 20. Greater than 20. Again, we evaluate things out sequentially. So this becomes false. This still false. But when I get to this next statement, x is greater than 20. x is uh, 75. 75 is bigger than 20. This gets regarded as true. So I don't do any of this stuff. I don't get to go to is x less than 80 uh, because I've already found my true statement. So I've gone down my one path and I now move on with the rest of my code.